Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. This one is lesson three. Um, it's part one of this one, mixed and entire radicals. We are going to uh, work with radicals. We are going to combine them. We are going to break them up. We're going to uh, kind of put them in lowest terms, if you will. Um, so we're gonna start off with some theory here. Um, just like a half and five tenths are equivalent expressions because they have the same value, they're both 0.5, they're both a half. Um, we can say that the root of four times nine is the same, uh, is equivalent to the root of four times the root of nine, because both have the same value. Um, if we have the root of four times nine, that's like saying we've got the root of 36, which is equal to six. And if we do it the way that this is broke up, like if we have like, the root of 4 multiplied by the root of 9 like we do them separately. So let's do 2 times 3 that equals 6 as well. These are equal so that means that these are equivalent expressions. So whenever you see two um, radicals you can multiply them together um, to find out like what the root of their uh, total might be because it might not always work out perfectly like this but it is always true that it is equal. Uh, we can prove that again, I believe, with the third root of 8 times 27. We could do uh, 8 times 27 is 216. So we could say that the uh, equal to the third root of 216. We could say that um, the third root of 216 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36, times 6 again is 216. Uh, the third root of 8 times the third root of 27 is equal to, the third root of 8 is 2, the third root of 27 is 6. Again, they are equal. So it's just proving that those are equivalent expressions. We can do that no matter what, if it's square root, cube root, uh, whatever the numbers are, we can split it up or we can put them together. So this is the official math way to put it here. Multiplication uh, property of radicals, uh, if the index is the same, if n index is the same, where it's a natural number, and a and b are real numbers, uh, you can multiply them together and put them under the same radical. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify uh, radicals now, and there's going to be two methods. I'm going to show you the both methods for a couple of them. I generally just use method one unless I am having a very hard time uh, then I use method two. Uh, so I'm going to mostly use um, method one where we just look for perfect nth factors where we have the same index. So numbers that are factors of 12 that we know the square root of essentially. Let's get to it. I have the square root of 12, and I want to essentially simplify this is the question. Um, I'm going to do method one first. I'm going to see if I can break this into two numbers that I know at least one of them has a, like the square root of. So the factors of 12 are one and 12. That's not very helpful, right? One and 12, we don't wanna do things by one. We could do two times six, but I don't know the square root of two and I don't know the square root of six, so that's not helpful in this situation. And I could do three times four. I know what the square root of four is. The square root of four is two. So I could write the square root of 12 as the square root of four times three, right? the two factors of 12. And because four times three is equivalent to the root of four times the root of three, what I actually have, because I know the root of four is two, what I really have is two roots of three. And not that the root of three is a variable, but we do treat it like a variable. And it is generally, we keep it, we treat it like a variable when it's a number so low that there are no factors that we can square root. So something like um, the square root of six, although it's not a prime number, there are no factors that we know how to square root. One and six, uh, two and three, we don't know how to square root any of that. 
So then we're going to treat that like a variable, and that's as low as we can go. So the answer that we have for the root of 12 is 2 roots of 3. The other way that we can do it is by prime factoring. So if we take 12 and we prime factor it, um, let's do 4 times 3 and then 2 times 2 to get 4. I can now write these numbers in a row similar to like I would like a set of prime factors but underneath a radical sign. So when I have a radical sign, I have 2 times 2 times 3. And remember that this number up here is a 2. Whenever there's nothing there, it's a 2. So whenever I have the same number of a number as that number up there, so I have two 2's and I have a 2 up there for the square root, that means that I can pull that whole number out and I don't need to have a square root anymore. So I could write this as 2 roots of 3. I still have one root of 3 so I can't pull that out but again we get the same answer and we treat the root of 3 like a variable. So I'm going to use method 1 most of the time, pretty much all of the time. Uh, I might use method 2 every once in a while. You're free to use either method you want as much as you want. Let's go to a couple of more problems here. We have the root of 80. Okay, so I want to start thinking of numbers that um, I know the square root of that might be factors of 80. Um, I don't like 5, I don't know. Uh, the square root of 10, I don't know. Um, I know that 8 is a square, is the, it goes into 80, but I don't know the square root of it. If 8 goes into it, then maybe 16 does. Uh, and I know the square root of 16. Um, so it would be the root of 16 times 5, which I can then write as the root of 16 times the root of 5, and that all then equals 4 roots of 5. Right? I could have done it another way. Um, I could know that 4 goes into 80, like 4 times 20 is 80. So I could write this as the root of 4 times 20. Uh, I know what the root of 4 is, but I need to break up 20 even further. Um, I can break up 20 into 4 and 5, actually. So I would say that this is the root then of 4 um, times 4 times 5. And then I know what the root of 4 is. It's 2, and it's just twice. So 2 times 2 is then 4. I'm left with 4 roots of 5. So we got the same answer no matter which way um, you do it. Um, we can also do this in prime factorization. Um, so we would go 80. Uh, let's see. We, uh, I want to go something different. I want to go 10 and 8. 5 and 2 goes into 10, and then 2 and 4, and the 4 breaks up into a couple of 2s. And then I'm going to write it under a radical sign, like I would um, if I was lining up my uh, prime factors. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And again, I have a 2 here, even though it's invisible. I have two sets of 2, so I can take 2 out twice, which equals 4. So 2 times 2 times the root of 5 which is equal to four roots of five. I've now done this problem three ways, and I could do it many more different ways um, with factor trees or with um, different versions of this, and they should all come out to the same answer. Let's do the next one. We have the cube root of 40. So now I'm thinking of numbers where I know what the cube root of them is uh, that are factors of 40. So I'm thinking numbers like 1, uh, 8, I'm thinking 27. Eight, wait, 8 goes into 40. Uh, we could write this as the third root of 8 times 5. And I know what the third root of 8 is. It's 2. So we could say that this is 2 roots of 5. No matter what method you use, um, ooh, I forgot one thing, 2 third roots of 5. Uh, no matter what method you use, you should get that number uh, or that value. Again, we're treating the third root of 5 like it's a variable. Let's see, we've got the fourth root of 162. So with 162, I'm looking for numbers that I know the fourth root of, and that gets a little bit tricky. That'd be like 1 or 16 or 81. 
Uh, I see that 81 does his half of 162. So um, being familiar with these numbers makes it much, much easier to do these problems. Uh, because this is a little bit of an awkward one, I will do this as, um, I'll do this in two ways. I'll do this uh, that way, where I have 181, or I have 81 times two, and where I have the prime factorization tree. So I know that 162, uh, 81 goes into it, and I know what the fourth root of 81 is, it's three. So um, we can now write this as the fourth root of 81 times two, which is equal to, well, the fourth root of 81 is three times the fourth root of two. So there is our number. Um, we have next, we have the four, tw the root of 24 divided by two. That is our next one. And then we have some try it on your own for you guys to do. Uh, we know what the, oh, I, did, I said I was gonna do the prime factorization tree, so I will do that. Uh, 162, let's divide it by two, so that's 81 and two, nine and nine, and that's four threes. Then, in our prime factorization tree, we can then write it out, the fourth root of three times three times three times three, um, and then, oh, I should have wrote the two at the front, but I'll write it at the back. Now, because I have four threes, and it's a four out here, I can pull out a single uh, three. So I get three fourth roots of two. And again, they're the same. Let's do the root of 24 divided by two. And essentially, in these problems, what you're going to do is you're going to do the top, and then afterwards, you're going to divide it all by two. Uh, that's the easiest way to go but, uh, to go about it. So some factors of 24 that I know the square root of, well, I know that four goes into 24 six times. So I could write this as the root of four times the root of six, all divided by two. The root of four is two, so I could say that's two divided by, two roots of six divided by two. These cancel out and I'm left with just the root of six. And I don't go any lower because I don't know any roots of any numbers that are factors of six. So that is essentially as low as we can go and as simple as we can make it. Um, there are three tried on your own, so definitely try those out, pause the video, and when you're done, uh, come on back and we'll give them a try. Okay, so let's do it. We have first the root of 63. Uh, the root of 63, um, 63 is a really common number to me because I know that it is one of those factors of nine you know, when you use your fingers. I know that the root of nine and the root of seven would get me the root of 63. Uh, and I know what the root of nine is, it's three. So I can say that this is three roots of seven. Uh, I don't know any factor, fa seven's a prime number, so I don't know any factors, uh, and I don't know the square root of any factors of it, so it, it's just left as that. Uh, we have the third root of 108. Uh, 108, I know that 12 goes into it. Uh, there are, must be a couple of other numbers that go into it. Well, actually the back two numbers are divisible by four, right? Eight is divisible by four, which means that this whole number must be divisible by four. So let's see, um, if I was to take four, four times 25 is 100, so that means four times 27 would get me um, 108, and 27 I know the cube root of. So that could be the cube root of four times the cube root of 27, and I know the cube root of 27 is three, so that is three cube roots of four. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We can move on to the last problem. I guess I'll leave that on because there's space. We have the fourth root of 128. And again, uh, we're looking for numbers that are kind of difficult, like 16 and 81. Let's use the prime factorization tree method on this one. So let's just break it up here. Um, I know that 128 can be broken down, divided by two, and so two and 64. Are, uh, are numbers that can work. And then 64 is eight times eight, and eight times eight is four and two, and then the fours are 
broken down into twos. So I can now write this as prime factorization, set of prime factors underneath the root of four. So the root of four, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven twos. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that correct? I believe that is correct. So I can pull out one set of four, and then I have, the, have to leave the rest underneath, but I can still combine them. I know that two times two times two is eight. So I take out the four because this is a four. So I would have two, and then I would have the fourth root of two times two times two, which is eight. That would be our simplified radical. There you have it. I believe there's some do nows. Yes, there's some do nows for you. Lucky you. Uh, give them a go and let you know. Let me know if you have any problems. Thanks.